Hey, blessings to you. It's Pastor Michael Miano, pastor of the Blue Point Bible Church, director of the Power of Preterism Network. And what we've been doing is going through this video series here called From Fasting to Feasting. And the goal has been to talk about the types that we see in the Bible with the Jewish feasts or the, the fast that they would do you know, throughout the year and to see how the substance was revealed or the anti-type was revealed in Christ. So I'm just going to wait for a couple more people to jump on and uh, we're going to jump right into this completion of from fasting to feasting. If you may uh, join me in a word of prayer as we lift this up for the glory of God and uh, we'll move forward from there. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for your truth and your spirit that continues to illuminate our world, our minds, renews our minds, Lord, and allows us to continue to be a, a sacrifice to you, Lord, that we would lift up the praise of fruitful lips, Lord, a sacrifice of praise to you. Allow us, Lord, the privilege of gaining more clarity in your word, seeing you glorified as we come to understand you more, and allow our speech and our lives to magnify and glorify you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So again, thank you for uh, joining me. I see we got a couple people tuned in, so I'm just going to jump right into things. What we were doing with the Fasting the Feasting series was I had highlighted <clears throat> Rosh Hashanah, the start of the fall feasts, and we talked about how that was fulfilled in AD 66, essentially as the Jews looked out on the horizon for that new moon, that new year, and what instead they would have seen, instead of just seeing a new moon that would have risen and gave them the mark of a new year, instead they saw clouds. They saw the coming of the Lord happening in AD 66, storming into the city of Jerusalem to fulfill that coming of the Lord. Um, they would not say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord until that day, well, you know, again, that's the next time they would see the Lord, Jesus had said in Matthew chapter 23. So that's one thing. Now, moving forward, we looked at uh, what other feasts did we take a look at? We talked about the feasts of Passover. We talked about all, all different feasts here from feasting to fasting. Um, I had brought us through the fast of Gedalia, right? We talked mostly about these fall feasts, um, the fast of Gedalia, the 10 days of awe. We talked a couple of, uh, about the day of atonement. And the final feast that we need to deal with here on our video today is going to be the Feast of Tabernacle as well as the um, Simcha Torah, Azaret Zemeni or, or something like that in the Hebrew as well. Um, Simcha Torah being the celebration of the law. So I wanted to just, uh, in completion of these feasts, I wanted to highlight where we see the substance in Christ in regards to the Feast of Tabernacle as well as the celebration of the law. Now, you could obviously go to our church podcast. We did a whole sermon series on that at the Blue Point Bible Church going through the month of October, talking about how consistent Christians understand the types and anti-types that are found in Scripture. Again, that's a part of walking worthy of 2 Timothy 2.15, studying to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. The man who does so need not be ashamed. So that's the goal. Again, that's the goal in what we're doing here. And we've been highlighting Colossians chapter 2, looking at how the feasts and the days and the new moons and so forth were the types that were highlighting the future fulfillment that would be the substance that would be found ultimately in Jesus Christ. That's how we're moving from fasting to feasting. Instead of fasting for, you know, a glorious reality to be provided in our future as we hope for the Messiah, instead now we're feasting with the Messiah and in the Messiah through his word. Amen. So uh, the Feast of Tabernacle, again, this was the final feast during the fall for the Jews, and this symbolized the the, the gathering of the full harvest and bringing it into the storehouse, right? Where uh, if it was a good harvest, obviously God was tabernacling amongst his people, that his presence was now being manifest because he told them in, in the law, you see that he, God says that if you listen to me, you will be blessed. If you disobey me, you will be cursed. And one of those blessings was that their crops would be provided, that they would, you know, have a, a good season each year as they went through the feasts and, you know, offered up atonement and the symbolization of atonement, not only seeing that high priest come out a second time, but also that they had a good harvest. And thus would begin the celebration, the seven day celebration of God's tabernacling amongst his people. Also in anticipation of when the Messiah would come and the true presence of God would be made known to his people. So the Feast of Tabernacle, again, we see this fulfilled in AD 70 at the judgment of the nations, the judgment of the wheat and the tares that Jesus spoke about. And that judgment, 
again, being manifest in AD 70, essentially demonstrated that the Old Covenant is no longer a sufficient system. In Hebrews chapter 9, I believe it is, it talks about how as long as that outer tabernacle stands, right, that, that earthly tabernacle stood, that the inner, the true, most holy place could not be revealed to God's people. And we know that in AD 70, that outer tabernacle, that natural system, was put to judgment, was put asunder, and not one stone was left upon another, thus revealing that those Christians who listened and heeded the words of God that stood upon the firm, solid rock foundation of Jesus' teachings had fled to the mountains and they survived. Who is God tabernacling amongst? Obviously not the Jews who did not just come under destruction, slavery, and death, but instead the Christians who heeded the words of Jesus Christ and did exactly as Jesus had told them to. And the presence of God was clear amongst them and it continues to be among, as amongst the Christians since that time, 2,000 years ago. So the Christians, we truly have God's presence amongst us. One of the things we do at the Blue Point Bible Church is we celebrate the Lord's table on the first Sunday of the month. And in contrast to what you read about in 1 Corinthians where the saints would be celebrating this feast to mark out the sacrifice, the death of the Lord, and you know every time they offered up that Lord's table, whether it was a ceremony or not is neither here nor there. However, that moment, of commemoration again was done in remembrance of him in remembrance of his sacrifice however today when our church or when we celebrate the reality of what Christ has accomplished we're not simply celebrating his death as a right sacrifice we're celebrating Christ in us the fulfillment of the hope of glory that Christ is now present in his people that we don't celebrate his death we celebrate his life in and amongst us so again to me that is a very clear indication and clarification in regards to the Feast of Tabernacle being fulfilled by Jesus Christ and then this past Sunday, I had the privilege of preaching at our church in regards to Simcha Torah, right? The celebration of the law. We know that in the New Testament, the law is referred to as the law of sin and death. The law is that which captivated the Jews in that system of death to reveal the need for a Messiah. You see this revealed in Galatians chapter 3 by the Apostle Paul. So, uh, do we rejoice in the law? Indeed, no. Uh, however, we rejoice in the Messiah who fulfilled the jots and tittles of the law, as he said he would in Matthew chapter 5. And he brought about a new heaven and a new earth, a new covenant that we now have the opportunity to celebrate him in. And it's only because he fulfilled all the jots and tittles of that old covenant. And we celebrate Christ for that reality. One of the interesting things about Simcha Torah is the fact that what they would do is they would all hold hands and they have this dance, the kafota. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. However, this dance would be a circle that they would dance in circles and they would all hold hands symbolizing the unity of the believers and the circle would also symbolize the unity and the momentum of the truth, of celebration in the law and in the truth. So they would do this and again that highlights the truth of how God's truth is amongst his people, right? It takes a community, it takes people holding hands, celebrating in Christ to truly make that truth known. I see that highlighted in Ephesians 3.15 where it says that that the church has been called to make known the manifold wisdom of God. So uh, we, we celebrate not Simcha Torah, we celebrate Simcha Hamashiach, right? We celebrate the Messiah, that in him we have now found covenant, not through the old covenant law of sin and death that was essentially the tutor, the schoolmaster, to lead up to the time of Christ. So I pray that that's a blessing. I pray that you have truly seen the significance of moving from you know, old covenant to new covenant, how you have seen the significance of moving from fasting and waiting and anticipating the things of God to instead rejoicing in and feasting in the things of God as revealed through his word. Amen. So I pray that this series has been encouraging to you. Also, if I, you know, if I haven't made it known well enough, I want to continue to encourage you to, uh, do some Google research if you choose to study out these details. Again, I made it very clear in our sermon at the Blue Point Bible Church. You can listen to that. Just simply Google Blue Point Bible Church podcast, and you can listen to our podcasts. And one of the things I made clear this past Sunday is that as consistent Christians, we need to be diligent in regards to the jots and tittles of the law. We need to know and understand how they were fulfilled in Christ Jesus. That is very important in regards to our salvation and our understanding of what this message is ultimately pointing to. And what what we should be feasting in and rejoicing in. So um, I pray that you'll find that resource as well as uh, Dave Curtis, Pastor Dave Curtis of the Berean Bible Church has an amazing series. It's always my go-to series in regards to the feasts of the Lord. So by that title, exactly, Feasts of the Lord, Pastor Dave Curtis of Berean Bible Church, he has some great resources there. I pray that you'll look into them and that you'll be encouraged and edified. Go in peace, saints. Thank you for taking time to tune in and continue to study to show yourselves approved.